it's Mary and I'm back with a scrapbook layout process video for Ink Road Stamps. If you haven't had a chance yet to go check out the blog, I'm putting a link down below because I'll have a blog post up as well. And um, lots of amazing, talented design team members are on Ink Road Stamps design team. So feel free to just go through and browse. Um, lots of really creative projects. Anyway, uh, today I decided that I would be inspired by the bright colors of summer and my son who has a bright colored personality and I'm just grabbing my cheapo watercolor set that I purchased from Michael Michaels and I'm kind of making rainbow colors in a circle. Now a lot of this is going to get covered up so I'm not worried about um, too much detail with these colors. I just wanted to make sure that I had colors kind of spread out in ways that would make for really interesting uh, background. So I'm just gonna play around a little bit with some paper and embellishments. The blue and white striped paper was a Hip Kit Club exclusive from maybe June or July, I think it was July. And I'll just go ahead and back this uh, pretty watercolor paper that I have done onto the blue and white striped paper from Hip Kit Club. And instead of doing um, a border all the way around, I wanted to kind of offset it. I've seen some people do some of that offset background border and I'm really loving the way that that looks. And I really enjoyed just that extra pop that it gave this page. So I'm just going to go ahead and figure out where I need to cut so that I can hoard as much of that paper as I possibly can because I really, <laughs> I really like that blue and white stripe. I tend to hoard more paper for that's like a that could go for Isaac's layouts than I do any other paper because it's harder to find papers that have bright pops of color for boys than it is for girls <laughs> and it's not like I mean obviously I have pink on here so it's not like I really you know care about having pink and purple in his layouts but I want it to be something that he can look back on and go oh that's really cool instead of mom you put flowers and pretty frilly things on my layouts <laughs> So anyway, I decided to choose the Struggle is Real stamp set, and uh, it's all because my son wanted me to make sure that the title was What the Fudge. I say it all the time at home, and he has picked it up as well. Yes, he's eight, but you know what? The times are changing, and I think that What the Fudge is hilarious. Anyway, I just went ahead and background stamped the question mark and the exclamation point from that st stamp set because it really adds to the whole what the fudge mom <laughs> because I'm giving him kisses at his birthday party and trying to take a selfie and all of his friends you don't see his friends in the background but they're all giving him bunny ears so he's like super embarrassed that I'm trying to kiss him and so the reaction on his face is, what the fudge, mom? And he's actually eating uh, fro frozen yogurt with fudge in it. So it was perfect. So I ended up stamping what the fudge for the title, a part of the title. And then I also used the question mark and the exclamation point. And I just have this um, chalk ink set that has rainbow colors in it. And I matched the colors as close as I could on top of the watercolor that I already used. And as you saw me just do, I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of different colors of embellishments to go with each of those color blocked sections. And I really love the way that this turns out in the end. It'll change because I'll, you know, I'll need to add some more stuff down to the layers underneath and I'll have to put down the photo and everything like that. So this is just kind of me putting it out on the layout to see what looks good and what, I, what I'm gonna use. And then I'll go ahead and edit as I'm gluing down. So I'm really trying to add more than just um, cardstock elements like ephemera packs or cardstock stickers. I'm trying to add things that have a glossy texture to it, that have the paper texture to it, that have the you know puffy texture to it, or the enamel acrylic shape stuff to it. So 
I even have some rubber charms in here. And the reason why I'm doing that, the reason why I'm making sure to mention this is because I feel like if you were to do this layout and it was just a, it you were just to have one type of texture on it it would look flat I feel like it wouldn't have that added interest that you would really want to have in a, in a layout like this it would just look like a hodgepodge of stuff placed randomly on a piece of paper so if you're wanting to try this at home and you can do any shape you know it doesn't have to be a circle it doesn't have to be it can be whatever you want. It could just go up and down the page or it can go up and down the side of a, of a photo. Um, just make sure that when you do this to add in those extra textures. Find those um, extra special things because it would really bring your project to life, I feel. Now, if I was thinking, I probably would have gone through and stitched out on some of the ephemera pieces, but I wasn't thinking. Um, this kind of took a little bit of time because I had several pieces I was adding onto this and I fussy cut a lot and you know with the mixed media in the background. So by the time that I got to the end, I wasn't even thinking other than the fact that it was done. <laughs> but um, adding some stitching into that would, would have been really pretty as well. So right now I'm building up the title. I'm using this OMG little rubber shape from an Amy Tangerine line and I couldn't tell you every single line that I pulled from. Some of the flair that I have in there is from my friend Becky and I'll put a link to her Instagram um, and Etsy shop and you can get some little flares. This uh, ephemera piece that I'm working on right now I'm putting my journaling on. This is an Amy Tangerine piece and I wrote down, I guess, turning eight is the age where mom can no longer kiss your face. <laughs> and it's so true. The uh, little emoji shape on the left, that's a DIY acrylic piece. And I can put a link um, to a previous video that I have done that shows you how you can make DIY acrylic pieces out of shrinky dinks. However, it doesn't make it onto the layout. Um, there's some other things in there that are acrylic pieces like from Freckled, Freckled Fawn. There's some um, wood buttons that are exclusive from Hip Kit Club. A lot of Amy, Jan Amy Tangerine big pieces from her On a Whim collection. And the, the eight with the, it's a red circle, orangish red circle up on the left there. It has the yellow eight on it. That's a Vicky Booten. There's some from my stash. I mean, I've got things from all over the place. Things that are like no name brands, things that are, you know, designer stuff. So now I'm taking some more um, papers from the On A Whim collection and I'm backing it with the really pretty like green to darker blue this paper here that has the white triangles on it and I thought about using the colored one but I, f I thought that that didn't pop enough against all of the colors I had going on in the background. Um, so I ended up using that as kind of my base layer and then I wanted to really ground this so I had a lot of color going on and I really wanted to have black and white to help pop everything to help the picture pop from the background. If I would have just kept adding color, I felt like it just would have blended in, even though the picture was in black and white. Um, I just felt like it helped out a lot. And I really love the geometric and like grids, the grid that she had in her collection and the geometric shapes. I'm obsessed with like those pokey dotty uh, black and white. They look like Dalmatian prints almost. I think that is my favorite print of all time. Just the black and white sketchy dotty print. <laughs> I am obsessed with it. So I'm also hoarding, hoarding a little bit of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back up my picture on some fun foam. And I do this because I've already got a lot of dimension going on with the embellishments that I feel like I need to it would look like it was all sinking in. If I just put the picture down flat on the paper, it would look like there's like this lake <laughs> of a picture. So I wanted it to be elevated a little bit. <laughs> and it, it matched up with some of the, the heights of like the wood veneers and things that I put on the layout. So I thought that turned out well. 
And yeah, I'm just gonna fiddle around. I placed down my biggest embellishments first and then I put from largest to smallest down. And I don't really have to move things around too much, which is amazing for me. That The embellishment part came out really fast compared to what I normally do with embellishments. And I think it's because it, it was more like I, I already knew where each color would go and I just had to figure out what visually looked nice. And if, if I started from the largest to the smallest, then it kind of did this elimination game for me. So I didn't, I didn't really think too much about what I was putting down when I put it down other than go from large to small, get the biggest piece out of the way and then work around that and then put it on top of the colors like the coordinating colors. So the yellow hearts that I have, those are from an old, I think they're from an old Studio Calico kit that I purchased on sale. Yeah, so that's it. I'm just popping things up on tape and placing it down. Um, Isaac turned eight in March, so I'm scrapbooking March pictures still. I have a lot from his birthday party that I want to scrapbook, but in order to keep my sanity, I have to scrap new pictures as well as older pictures. I'm not putting too much pressure to scrapbook every memory of life because if I don't get his, you know, if I don't get the special event this one time, it's still in the computer. You can still look at the pictures. I'm just kind of scrapbooking as I feel inspired and a lot of times product will inspire me like um, you know the Amy Tangerine line was very um, bold colors and it really reminded me of school stuff so I saved some of that so I can do some of the um, his school pictures going back to school. Anyway, it, if I feel inspired by something, then I'll do it, but I'm not too worried about scrapbooking every single picture. So if I get one picture from his birthday this year, I'm good with that. So I'm just going through and seeing if there are any more little wood buttons to use or little bits and pieces. And then I remembered that I cut up this um, branding strip at the bottom. They said, you are my sunshine, and it was an ombre effect. So when I added those to my layout at the end, you'll see that it kind of pulled the pink into the yellow, and it gave some more um, embellishments up at the top. I felt like there was an empty gap there, and I didn't know how to fill it. So I don't pull that in yet. I do I do pull it in at the end. And I'm just going to go around and stamp those colors down where I feel like it needs a little bit more. The pinks where the pinks are, the yellows where the yellows are. I really love this little chalk, chalk ink rainbow pad that I have. It's color box. And I love how vibrant the colors are and that they float on top of the paper instead of soak into it. So you really get this bold stamped image. And then I'm going to take some enamel, enamel dots and put them in the coordinating colored sections. And it's just to give it more texture, more interest. And then here I am, I've got my little box out. Um, I'm gonna add some black splatters in Shimmers Before Dawn. So this is a Vibes color that I'm gonna be using, which means that it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't dry straight up black. It's black, but it has some gray and silver colors in the shimmers. So it dries lighter than than black. It's almost like a charcoal and it was just a little bit more to tie in the black from the picture into the background. Then I'm going to go ahead and date stamp this for um, the 17th which is his birthday. And then here you see me adding in the branding strip that I cut in the beginning and I just did the ombre colors and that really, one, I 
I had messed up on the splatter. I would smudged it, so I had to cover that up. <laughs> but two, it also prevented that white blank space at the top. It gave what exactly it needed from the pink to the yellow up at the top. And that's going to be it for my layout today, you guys. I hope that you're inspired to use your stamps in fun new ways. And don't forget to head over to the shop to pick up some sets for yourself because they're fabulous. And I think everybody needs to have them. They're so handy and you can be so creative in many, many ways. So go check out the blog for the blog post. Check out what the other ladies are doing with the stamp sets. And I'll see you later. Bye.